You know, I have to wonder how it is that shooting this door then reflects this weapon that is allegedly made of pure energy. And then it reflects and hits Samus very clearly square in the face and nothing happens to her. Weird, isn't it? Hello there, everyone. This is Quiversy, and welcome back to more Metroid Prime. Last time, we went a, a bit of an exploration of the Talon overworld, found our way here to the Western Chozo ruins, and acquired back our missile launcher, which we can use to break open blast shields over doors. And it seems that this one was guarding a map station. Ain't that convenient. Let's go ahead and download that bad boy. You've downloaded the map for this area. We already know how to open the map. Let's take a looky-loo. Ooh. So it looks like there is a tiny little room here, but looking at the map, that looks like an access point that would need the morph ball, because it's just a little tiny hole. So probably can't do anything there. Uh, over here, that's a blast door, so we should be able to access this side path. That might be what I want to look at, actually. Uh, what about this over here? I don't know if we can jump up to that ledge, but we might be able to look around in this area. Although I know we won't be able to go all the way through this corner because this room right here, I recognize this kind of shape. That is something that's going to require the morph ball. 100%. Uh, let's see. I don't think there's anything over there that we could really do too much with yet. Where's the... Or did we already get the seismic activity? Was that what we just got? Hang on, let me zoom out. Yeah, the hint's gone. So that was the seismic activity uh, warning that we were given. So yeah, we can't go this way, which this place is called Transport Access North. This room is most likely a transport slash elevator. So yeah, I guess we'll just backtrack, go back to the uh, that blast door in the big room and go from there. I honestly don't remember what's at the end of that path that it leads to, but uh, there's only one way to find out it in there. And just to verify, no, this was not, uh, oh, it's a save room. I thought for sure that was a morph ball opening. Guess not. And that means that I was literally just like two rooms away from a save when I ended before. <laughs> ah, whatever. I'm, I'm only gonna worry about ending in a save room if I'm getting ready to stop for whatever recording session. Don't think I didn't see that. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Priorities have been adjusted. Pick up health. Kill wasps. Acquire missiles. If possible. Uh, oh, that's going to clear the wasp. Got to clear them up so I can actually... That. There we go. Dead high. That said, I know there's more. Of that wasp first. I thought I missed. Okay, I think we're good. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, okay, yeah, no, I can't get it. See this? This is a morph ball path. I need the morph ball. Oh, well. That sucks. Wait a minute, am I going backwards? I might be going backwards. I'm not going backwards. I'm going the correct way. Whoa! Shoot the eyes! I actually forgot they were in here. There we go. <laughs> okay. Safety has been acquired. As has some damage. And now we're back to the beetle room. Everyone's favorite! Ooh. Well, what's that? That's a health up, right? The ledge's object rests on cannot be reached from this room. Of course. So, hold on. That means that in order to get there, I would need to come from this transport, which means I'd either have to have the morph ball, or I'd have to go through here. OK. 
Can I get up here? I can get up here. But the door is up there. So the answer is no. No, I cannot get up there yet. Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll worry about that later, I suppose. For now, Beetles! Beetles and Blast Doors, let's go. All right, I don't need to worry about the last beetle. I'ma just blast through the door and be on my merry way. More scarabs to deal with, fun times. Even if they are a little easier to deal with than the parasites, they are still annoying. But if you are low on health or missiles or something, they are a pretty good source for getting pickups since each individual scarab has a chance of dropping them. Oh, we're gonna get something good in here. What's that? The Morph Ball. We were just talking about how we needed that. But. Just like with the missile launcher, it's not gonna be that simple. We got ourselves a bunch of beetles. Bit of a beetle gauntlet going on. Let's just clean them up. There is a lot of beetles, and as you can see, when we kill them, more pop up. I don't remember how many there are, but it is a lot. Similar to how the power beam wasn't uh, hurting Samus when it was reflecting back at her. Apparently, when you are locked onto a target, the power beam can kind of go through other targets. Because I'm definitely seeing my beam just going clean through some of these other beetles that are between me and whatever I'm locked onto. Interesting. Very interesting. I don't know, maybe their hitbox is just a little bit smaller than their model or something. Anyways, with the beetles cleaned up, it's now time for the Papa Beetle. Look at this big boy. He's got a shiny face and a glowing butt. I think it's pretty obvious what we need to do here. Scan him, the Plated Beetle. Well-armored burrowing insect, vulnerable only in the rear abdomen. Creature's thick cranial plating can repel frontal attacks. This gives it an advantage in combat, allowing it to make ramming attacks only surfacing when it detects vibrations above. It then maneuvers itself so as to always face its rival, keeping its exposed abdomen protected. Yes, this creature is big and a bit on the tanky side. I had forgotten about this. So yeah, if I jump while holding side, ha, I can do a bit of a side jump. And that's how you get around him. But even then, he's still pretty quick. The missiles, as Samus's notes have mentioned, will home in on your target. So even if I'm not entirely, dang it, it I, I definitely wasted a bunch of them there, but you, you saw how they were like homing in when I was targeting. That is what I was hoping to bank on. Unfortunately, I ran out. So now it's down to just the power beam. And even though this guy is kind of being treated like a boss, he's more like a mini boss, so we're not getting a health bar. Which now I think about it, we didn't get one for, um, for the Hive Tyrant, either, or Mecha Hive, whatever it was called. There we go. He dead. And now the passage to becoming an orb is ours. Man, I don't care how flexible you are, that has to be painful. Morph Ball acquired. Press C to activate Morph Ball mode and use the control stick to move around. What else can we gather from the Morph Ball? The Morph Ball changes your suit into a compact mobile sphere. Like the Power Suit, the Morph Ball is modular. There are several modifications that can be added to improve performance. This is true. The Morph Ball will be getting its own slew of upgrades. And one thing I do love about the Morph Ball is, like, obviously you can just see it just rolling around like this. But if you keep it going straight long enough, you'll actually get a neat little line and it kind of comes with a small speed boost basically when you see this line that means you're going at top speed and you can turn with it like that but if you turn around too much you'll obviously get it a bit off kilter if you try and go in a sideways direction at least i'm like 80 percent sure that you are going faster with that 
Anyways, we see these little areas here. Multiple microscopic fractures found throughout sandstone wall section. So this kind of goes into what I was talking about with the missiles earlier with um, brimstone and whatever the other one was. It's telling me a material type, which means that there is something that can break that material. Unfortunately, missiles cannot destroy sandstone, which is interesting to think about, but don't worry about it. Then we can also see on the map, there is another door with a purple wall, but we can't quite get to it. It appears like it's behind here. So we'll have to come back and deal with that later. Not that we'd be able to deal with the purple wall if we got to it. Why do I keep wanting to push one to Morph Ball instead of C? Anyways, yeah, with Morph Ball, as we have done before, you can go through tiny crevices, and it gives you access to a lot of stuff. Can't really do too, too much with it. There's a couple of Morph Ball paths we've seen that we can't do anything with, but those will become relevant in due time. So now that we do have said morph, where do I want to take it? That's the real question. I could take it here to the transport access, which might give us access to a life up. I can't go up there. There's nothing else here. You know what? That is what I'm going to do. I could go back to the Talon overworld, but I want to get a little bit more progress. I'm definitely going to make sure that I backtrack at some point. Which way do I need to go? Is it this way? Yeah. I will be making sure I backtrack at some point to um, like go out of my way and explore. But I want to have at least a few more core abilities before I start looking for random missile packs and energy tanks and stuff. You know, just one or two more basic things. So, similar to what I was talking about earlier, I don't think... Go away, Beatles. I don't think we can actually get this. Because while we do have the Morph Ball and we can go in here, we can't actually jump as a Morph Ball. There's no way for us to actually progress through that tunnel. So, we're out of luck there. Uh, anyways, I just kind of want to demonstrate that real quick. So, I'm just going to save and I'll meet you back at the... Uh, Morph Ball Path on the other side of where the Mecha Hive was. All right, here we are. So yeah, the Morph Ball, and we can go into this uh, this little tube, which was marked with something that looked kind of like a spider web. And now we have ourselves our four, first little Morph Ball maze. This one is accompanied with pistons to help us escalate our way through. It's not really much of a maze, but get there again. That's something to expect in the future. I actually really dig Morph Ball Mazes. They're some of my favorite things in Metroid games. And here we have access to an elevator. Where does this elevator lead? The Magmore Caverns North. However, I'm not going there yet. No, I want to go this way. Assuming I can. Ah, another piston. Ah, dang it. Come on. Zloop. Up we go and in the hole. And in another hole. All right, and another door. Ooh, a puzzle room. But uh, first things first, lore. The future is a vague thing, ever changing and always in doubt. Even if we chose or could gain the ability to foresee the future, it would be a hollow gift. For we could never hope to control what is yet to occur. The fountain is an example of this. The day may come when its waters dries up and there's nothing we could do to stop such a tragedy. But we do know this. Unlike the uncertain flow of water, the power of our will is strong and enduring. The will of the Chozo will never run dry. Philosophers, scholars, but very much proud of what they are. Such is the Chozo. Anyways, uh, unfortunately, while I do love the presence of a good puzzle room, complete with a missile prize, we can't actually interact with it. Not yet. We need this. This appears to be the first of three locking mechanisms that seal the gate. 
The lock is active, but its key slot is sealed by a weak metal grating. Actually, I actually think we can. No, we cannot. It just says metal. Oh, I didn't mean to shoot a second missile. But uh, yeah, similar to when our beam ricochets off stuff, if your missile can't open a thing, it will also ricochet instead of exploding harmlessly, which is what I would expect a missile to do. What would, now I'm wondering, realistically, what would actually cause a missile, like an explosive warhead that is meant to go boom upon impact with whatever it's flying towards at high speed? What would actually cause it to just completely ricochet and bounce off of whatever it hit? I want to know. Because that just seems crazy. I don't know why I'm shooting that wasp. Anyways, we got what I came for. That being, uh, of course, the energy pack. I can't go through this door, can I? This door can only be open from the other side. Crap. Uh, okay. So the question is, do I go that way and try to explore the rest of here? Do I go here and travel to Magmore Caverns, or do I go back and check out parts of Talon 4 overall? I think I'm going to head back here, see if I can't explore more of the ruins, and then go back to the down to the Magmore Caverns. Give that give that place a check. So, uh, I guess I'll meet you back at the transport room. Again. Wait a minute. There's an upgrade in here. Did I ever check this room? Like, I, I'm hearing a noise, and I don't think I actually inspected this room properly. Get rid of the wasp's nest before I forget. Yeah, hold on. I need to... I need to poke around here. Oh. Okay. I think it's in there. But I... Can't get in there yet. All right. So let's see what's behind door number two. I actually expected that. Yep. We can't quite traverse this either. There's another thingy that we can't interact with. But, we can scan it. Magnetic rail system track detected. It appears to be active. Spider ball technology required to access track. Yes, the spider ball is an upgrade we have not seen yet. That is a small energy unit. I don't know why I felt the need to scan it. But, hello, what's this? This cordite wall hanging appears to be slightly cracked. I never scanned that in the original, and that is another material. Chozo script translated. The cries of this dying land echo in our ears as we Chozo watch the great poison seep ever further into the living pulse of this planet. The dark energy sinks into the trees and waters, devouring all life. Peaceful beasts die by the thousands. Some creatures survive, but their forms grow as twisted and evil as the force that fell from the sky. Many of these mutated monstrosities remain small enough to do little harm, but others grow enormous and threaten our very existence. One such beast defiles our sacred fountain, Disgorging poison from its foul form. Replacing pure, flowing water with cascades of creeping death. Even in the face of such horror, we Chozo do not turn in fear. We are all that stands in the way of this great poison. And it is our duty to contain it. It's the first we've heard of that, huh? This great poison that kills many creatures, but alters others to uh, potentially monstrous proportions. That crash landed here from an unknown place beyond the stars. We'll definitely be seeing more bits of storytelling regarding that. But that is for later. For now we descend into Magmore. 
I seem to remember this place being annoying at times. Like, I don't remember too much about specifics, but I just remember Magmore equals least fun place of the of the world. But with good music. Ooh, hold on. There we go. Got him. Shriek bats. Territorial ceiling dweller. Body temperature peaks at 121 degrees centigrade. Shriek bats have high internal temperature, making them easy to spot with thermal imaging. They roost on cave ceilings while hunting for small prey. Fiercely territorial, they dive bomb anything that wanders near. As I mentioned before, I don't like them. Maybe that's one reason I don't like Magmores, because this is a place that Shriek Bats call home. <laughs> There's a door over there and a door down here. Let's go behind door number one. Safe point! Hey, what do you know? Ain't that convenient. I think I'm gonna go a little bit further before we wrap up for the moment. Let's take a look at uh, door number two at the very least, huh? Also, apparently entering that save room did not cause things to respawn since there was pickups that I'd never picked up there. Anyways, another new unit, the enemy, rather, the Grisby. Subvolcanic carrion feeder. Carapace can be breached by missiles. The Grisby's carapace has been fused together by superheated air. This barrier stands up to everything but concussive blasts. Its intelligence is limited to instinctive scavenging patterns. So, oh yeah. Can't hurt it with the beam. Gotta missile them. They're relatively harmless creatures, though. Intense heat readings detected behind this door. That's the other thing. Magmore Caverns has dangerous heat zones. That if you step in them... Intense heat readings have been detected. We are now in critical mode. We are taking continuous damage because our life support is failing as it can't handle the heat. And that's what happens when you let it go a little too far and you die. Life support offline. Game over. I had a strong feeling that would happen, but I wasn't too concerned because we just saved. Well, what that means, though, is Magmore ain't where we're supposed to be. I thought that we actually were supposed to go through parts of Magmore, but uh, I guess not. Uh, so I guess with that in mind... I'm going to end things off here, and I think that next time on Metroid Prime, we'll rejoin back in, um, back on the Talon Overworld, because I can't think of where else I can go, and there's some blast doors there that need blasting. Plus, there's at least one missile pack I know I can get now. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.